And now to Poland, where the church beatified an entire family together for the first time, including a newborn baby boy. We take a closer look at this celebration and the Olma family's heroic virtue. The little boy did not yet have a name, yet today we already call him blessed. On September 10th, thousands traveled to the small village of Markova, Poland, to honor the heroic lives of the Olma family. Cardinal Marcelo Semeraro, prefect of the Vatican's dicastery for the causes of saints, celebrated mass and unveiled the official portrait of the family. The Nazis murdered the Olmas in 1944 for sheltering members of several Jewish families in their home. Cardinal Semeraro emphasized that while their story is bittersweet, their charity should be remembered above all. It would be misleading if the day of the beatification of the Olma family only served to bring to mind the terror of the atrocities perpetrated by their executioners. Instead, we want today to be a day of joy. Joseph and Victoria Alma married in 1935. In their nine years of marriage, they welcomed seven children. Father Vitold Berda, the postulator for their cause for sainthood, says Victoria and Joseph's marriage reflected their strong Catholic faith, which they eagerly shared with their young children. The education they provided for their children exemplified their value system, emphasizing the importance of transmitting the most essential values with faith in Christ being the foremost. Their life was marked by mutual respect and a climate of faith, which extended to recognizing the needs of others whom they willingly assisted. The family's strong values values guided their decision to help hide their Jewish neighbors from authorities for two years. Their true test came when faced with a crucial decision, whether to side with the unjust laws imposed by the German occupiers who punished aiding Jews or to stand with the persecuted individuals. The entire family lost their lives for hiding Jews from the Nazis, including their youngest. When they dug this makeshift grave, one of the witnesses recounts that from Victoria's womb, they noticed she was in advanced stages of pregnancy and they saw the head and the chest of the baby. Though this baby never had the chance to receive the sacrament of baptism, he shares in his parents' redemptive suffering. Dr. Matthew Bunsen, vice president and editorial director of EWTN News, explains that this baby received what the church has deemed baptism by blood. The church uh, has always taught that uh, baptism is required for salvation. You can read that in the catechism. But the catechism also uh, it clearly states uh, that uh, throughout church history, uh, that those uh, who die by virtue of blood, by martyrdom, without having been baptized, are graced with salvation, uh, even though they were not baptized. In other words, uh, baptism by blood is death with and for Christ. Despite reports suggesting that the child would be the first unborn baby to be beatified by the church, the Vatican made it clear that this little blessed was a newborn. They wanted to be very clear uh, that uh, the child was born at the time, or considered born, at the time of the martyrdom, the execution of uh, the parents and the, the rest of the family. The heroic lives of the blessed Alma family and the innocent life of the newborn baby serve as a reminder to the church's call to holiness for families. Without ever having uttered a word, today the little blessed cries out to the modern world to welcome love and protect life especially that of the defenseless and marginalized from the moment of conception until natural death.